Hi team, exclamation point. Do you think that high-end CPUs are necessary for 4K60 gaming? I currently have a 13600K 480 setup. And with price volatility at the moment, I'm thinking now might be the time for a CPU upgrade. That said, for 60 FPS, is it necessary? The advantage of higher-end CPUs seems to be higher FPS in the hundreds. The games that tax the CPU, Dragon's Dogma, Star Wars, Outlaws, seem to tax even the highest CPU CPUs to sub 60 results, exclamation right. point. Can you help with some clarity in this often contentious subject? Mm. Um, so Alex, the concept of, um, um, I think Intel back in the day did something about this. It's kind of like the balanced PC. Hey, you need an i5 for our A770 or an i7, but an i3 is fine for an A750. And I actually think that's kind of rubbish at this point yeah it's based um, on their driver stuff right the, yeah i mean because <laughs> hobex is actually pointing out the issues here which is that in the age of the stutter which is primarily a cpu and possibly a memory bandwidth um based situation um <laughs> that the advice is kind of like similar to what you should uh, to, to any pc component buy the best one you could afford yeah so that would be my first thing buy the best one you could afford for the reasonable gpu you have for, the 4080 though is already so high up there that i wouldn't i would only expect really the best cpu with a, a, C, a gpu of that caliber now the one thing is 4k 60 is actually limiting in another aspect that the person isn't talking about and that is the ability to use frame generation yeah. um so one thing is if even if a game is like cpu limited without hitches to like the 50s and upper 40s maybe frame gen might be able to get you on a on a screen that does support 120 hertz or 144 hertz it may get you into a level of fluidity that you wouldn't have had otherwise on the same cpu and you're kind of screen limited at, the, at that point and you can't use frame gen if you're just targeting 4k 60 only so i'd say like uh, 4K60 is nice because the consoles target it in that aspect, but from like the PC GPU perspective, it's actually kind of not the place you'd want to be because you'd actually really want to be using stuff like Reflex. You'd be wanting using VRR. You'd be wanting to use frame generation to get higher fluidity at much better, you know, input latency than a console. And I think that is a different situation altogether and for those things to work out the best as they can obviously your cpu is fine i think 13600 13600 is pretty okay for most titles but for the, like the worst worst titles the 9800 x3d or any of the 3d cache cpus is really where you should be if you are so focused on keeping that perfect 60 and so focused on reducing frame times as much as possible so yeah what do you think john yeah, I mean that hmm, that is a tricky one indeed. Um whew. and it, I'm actually thinking about CPU upgrades myself lately. So Yeah, right. Uh and frame gen, as you mentioned, Alex, kind of is the big savior right now. Now, I know a lot of people push back against it, but I still think like when using frame gen up to above 60 hertz refresh rates which he's not talking about doing here, but that really does sort of solve the CPU issues for me in a lot of cases, right? Like that's the whole point is it sort of carries the load where the CPU is faltering. And it does help a lot. I definitely believe it. I just can't, I mean, I guess if you're a gamepad user and you're like playing only on your TV, I find it, I, it's even then just limiting PC gaming to 4K60 is a strange thing to me. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I would want to do that anymore. Because there's really no need to do that at this point. I mean, even in the living room, pretty much every TV you buy these days is going to be 4K 120 capable. Right. Right? So, like, I would like to hear more logic as to why he's decided to limit himself to 4K 60. Uh, because that yeah. is, I, I don't, that's what I don't get. Possibly a display upgrade would be the preferred route forward. It could be, um, actually, if that's the limit he, right here we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, even even over a CPU upgrade, I would say just get a, get a, a new display. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically, it is a case of buying the best CPU you can you can buy you can find really uh, if you are intent on buying a new CPU. Because basically, the way things are at the moment with game performance, it's it's not really the average frame rate that's the issue anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, every CPU um, 
modern CPUs should be getting you north of 60 frames per second. It's basically frame health or volatility that's the problem. Uh, and, you know, you never know when it's going to happen. And there are scenarios where, you know, to get, a, I mean, this is kind of like the nuclear scenario, but for stuff like Jedi Survivor and possibly for Oblivion, it is the case that you basically should be, you know, thinking about capping performance to an area where your CPU can, can cope without that volatility and then basically using frame generation to get you back into high refresh rate territory, yeah. which is, which is on the face of it, ludicrous and should never shouldn't be a, a scenario for this and yet and at the same time it, it can work yeah it's it's the one where i almost feel bad if i ever recommend it because it's like ugh, this game should just be better like this game i've noticed be actually in your uh, reviews alex that you don't really talk about frame generation much <sighs> that's because i'm trying to avoid the situation uh, this is a political stance <laughs> i'm trying to avoid no. the situation where i excuse games for being bad because you can get a better experience with frame gen uh, i don't want it to become normalized uh right. that that games right. are shipped poorly and frame gen can help them be better in a way i mean that's the way nvidia is and even amd are gonna or intel are gonna say like this is gonna make cpu limited games so much better and the truth is it can be but i don't want that to be the the de facto way games are developed right. exactly. really yeah at all. Suddenly, <laughs> had a, 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 suddenly had a flashback to the launch of arkham knight on pc where right. it where the solution to a consistent experience was basically to lock to 30 frames per second which gave you so much buffer time that all of the memory issues that were happening in the background could actually be carried out in time to mm -hmm. get you a new frame and so the the modern sort of you know, corollary, corollary to that would be to cap at a, a low frame rate and then frame gen up to a high frame rate. Yeah, I mean, I think that <laughs> is, is not a, great. That, that's a good idea for a video, though. I think a video that I would like to do would be just in general saying use 60 FPS caps, actually, and then frame gen. But also, I actually do want to investigate the usefulness of traditional V-Sync. Um, because uh, one yeah. thing like that reflex will not do is it will not be buffering frames. And that is obviously good from the latency perspective, but from the yeah. ability to have a stable frame time, it may actually, that's one of the things back in the day, if you did play with that option in the NVIDIA control panel, it would say, you know, like longer, more buffered frames could be uh, a higher frame. They did, they would just say like frame rate stability or something like that. They didn't have the concept of frame times there. Um, but I'm curious, that'd be one thing I would love to investigate um uh, like is there any usefulness to traditional vsync anymore uh beyond getting rid of tearing and you know like that's the one thing i want to talk about maybe in a video at some point in the future which might apply to you hobix Hobbix. i think vsync needs to die on pc yeah i level with you yeah um it, it, you know vrr has just kind of nullified the point of it to be honest i think to a certain extent um but you know you do need to have um good frame health for mm -hmm. VRR to work and for reflex to work by the sound of it. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, One thing that's been happening recently is a couple of games have misimplemented reflex and there's uh, Special K and uh, also a couple other modders have come in to like re-implement it <laughs> uh, because games <laughs> mess it up actually and it leads to worse, worse frame times. So that's, man, wouldn't it be nice yeah. if there was just games that were shipped with good quality sometimes? <laughs> it would be nice. Yeah. Yeah.